that's the best thing I've ever seen in my Yo! life. Yo! How's your brain? Uh, it's okay. That's it's a okay. Little, it's a little bit cultured. <laughs> Live from Austin, Texas, home of the most cultured brains in the Western Hemisphere, it's Retro Pals with Danny and Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello, Danny. I am so cultured, I can't stand it. I, I guess am... uh, I guess in this context, a cultured brain refers to a brain that's been molded over. Ah, don't mold my brain. It's, it's not normal. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> the mold is taking control, and it's telling me to deliver a stream to everyone. So, oh. good news. We have a stream. All right. <laughs> it's time for Retro Pals. We have Culture Brain and, uh, take it away, Alex. Okay, so, okay, so first of all, while Danny's brain gets cult recultured again, I want to thank everyone who resubbed before the show. Thank you, Spree Speedy Free, for the 21-month resub. Do appreciate that. Thank you, Turbulent Eddie, for the prime sub. Thank you, Sturlock, for the 18-month resub. Sturlock says, yay, Culture Brain. I freaking love this weird-ass company. I played the almighty shit fuck out of Fighting Simulator on GBA. Game Boy, aka Hero no Ken Gaiden. I can't wait to see the weirdest of the weird from these guys. That this is what Retro Pals is all about. Wow, totally an right. actual fighting simulator fan. We found one. <laughs> and thank you so much to uh, Punky Chris for the two month reset. Punky Chris says, Chris says, super excited to catch my first live showcase stream. Yeah, this one ought to be a good one. And thank you to No Problems for the. 35 month resub holy moly you are almost at three years and heck of my, a lot of months my voice is also squeaking and also punky crisps just makes me think of delicious cookie crisp cereal oh, so man. good job cookie crisps for punks i love it why don't they do this <laughs> marketing marketing thanks everyone and thank you welcome to everyone who's shown up thank you uh this is one of our infamous ambitious streams where uh -oh. i want to do way more than we could possibly handle so please excuse any awkward pauses crashes or hardware failures because mm -hmm. it's probably going to happen oh absolutely this week, it was the Battle of the Brains on the Retro Pals Patreon. We asked a simple question, culture brain or electro brain? And that's how that shook out. People would prefer to have a cultured brain than an electrified one, for mm. some reason. I don't know why. I don't know. I, I like when my brain's shot with electricity. It fucking rocks. <laughs> Hopefully someday we'll get a chance to cover the old electro brain. Uh, maybe if there's another company with brain in the title, we can put that up, up against them in the <laughs> brain losers bracket. You have to name your company after brain, and that then we will showcase you. But for now, it's time to cover culture brain, because that's what the people demanded. Culture Brain started off in the early 80s making extremely obscure arcade games under the name Nihon Game, mm -hmm. or Japan Game. Hey, it works! A few years later, they came to their senses and decided to rename their company with a much more sensible name, Culture Brain. I like it. I, I can't tell you, but I, I can't tell you what to think, but I like it. At that point, they started making games for the Famicom, and then they established a U.S. office, and boy, did they ever take off over the hair. They uh, they had an impact, let's say, especially among kids back in the day with magazine subscriptions. If you had a subscription to GamePro back in the day, you saw many, many, many ads from Culture Brain, mm -hmm. leaving you wondering, what the hell is with these games? I was one of those kids. I was there, man. I was in the shit, as they say. And we're actually going to start with my first exposure to Culture Brain. This is technically a uh, kind of off the timeline. We're skipping ahead just a little bit in Culture Brain history, but... I'm going to do it for me, damn it. Mm -hmm. The first ever Culture Brain game I ever owned and played was a game called Kung Fu Heroes. Let's play it. Alright, I'm excited. There it is. Oh, nice. Look at that. Beautiful. This was released in Japan in 86 under the title Super Chinese, and then later brought to America in 1989. Uh... Games that had that long of a localization period typically don't fare too well. Uh, think of Hydlide, for example. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this game fared too well either, because when I first saw it, it was at KB Toys, and it was $15. It was the cheapest damn Nintendo game <laughs> I had ever seen in my life. Holy moly. Back then, the game started at $40. Uh, most of them were $50. I think a few were 60 
And uh, yeah, when I saw this in the bargain bin, I picked it up and I was like, look, mom, dad, we spend five bucks a week renting me games. What if instead we spent $15 on this game and I get to keep it? I'll be happy forever and I'll never bother you again. Did you ever bother them again? Oh yeah, like instantly. Oh, good, good. So you might think of this as an upgraded port of their arcade game, Chinese Hero. And this starts kind of a theme with Culture Brain. They're a little bit obsessed with Kung Fu and fictionalized Chinese culture, for whatever damn reason. Huh? That's Culture Brain, baby. Earlier today, a friend of the show, Taizo Hori, posted a very lengthy thread on Twitter that basically is the world's only English language resource on Culture Brain. So feel free to look at that if you want some uh, backstory behind who they are and what they do. It's very good stuff. I was glad to read that. Let me just put a... drop that link in the chat there. Now this is a game where you go around and punch and kick people. Good. If you kick enough people, the door opens and you get to go to the next level. It's a bonus round. And very quickly, I think the key to enjoying this game is mastering the Miracle Kick. This is a move you do by first standing still and then hitting the kick button, at which point you rise in the air. And then, after that, you can just zoom across. It makes you feel really powerful. Oh, I got shot. I like the bullets just slowly sliding across the screen like bullet time. Yeah, some guy is very slowly firing bullets off screen. <laughs> Real quick, thank you to Kama Chameleon for the 21 month resub. Super do appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, do 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 check out Taizo's thread. I, I learned Very a lot. informative. <laughs> it's been suspected that they were a Yakuza front due to their, uh, let's say, repetitive output and narrow focus. There's I just a whole think lot they to were like more cultured than we were. That could be it. Maybe we just don't get it. But essentially, this is an old-school, single-screen arcade game that came around in a time when NES games were universally becoming more sophisticated. Games started to have uh, save batteries, long quests, games that you couldn't finish in a single sitting. And this is just old-school as hell, and I don't think anyone knew what to make of it. Little Danny, though, he didn't know the difference. He was just like, oh boy, a video game. <laughs> I, I... Let's skip ahead. I mean, if it works, I mean, if it works on your parents, you're like, hey, mm -hmm. little Danny will love this game. Don't worry about it. Uh, that same KB Toys the next year, uh, I bought another $20 game. That was Castlevania 3. That was a little bit of a better deal than this game. <laughs> Holy shit, how much was it? It was 20 bucks. What? Brand new. It's Damn. sealed in the package. Thank you to Smooth W1 uh, for the eight month reset sub. They say, I have Retro Pals brain. Unfortunately, so do I. Sorry. Yeah, it's a shame. I don't think there's any cure. Right now, I've equipped the gun ball power up, which allows you to shoot bullets from your fists. Hey, that kind of rocks. One thing I like in each level is that uh, one particular rock has access to a bonus stage. And what you want to do is collect these E balls. I think five or six gives you an extra life, and it's real easy to stock up on lives in the early levels. I'm telling you all this, uh, telling you how to play this, and about the gameplay systems, because you can actually play this nowadays. It's on the Nintendo Switch Nintendo Online service, to, uh, to the Nintendo Superfan's extreme chagrin. Because, uh, people were all like, what's this shit? I never heard of this. Where's Donkey Kong Country? <laughs> Which is fair, because the way Nintendo puts games on Nintendo Switch Online is there's a big red button that says Kung Fu Heroes and another big red button that says Donkey Kong Country. And they push the wrong fucking button. So, you're right to complain. <laughs> I don't know why they put those buttons so close to each other, but that's, you know, culture brain for ya. <laughs> it's that one meme image of the dude, uh, sweating. <laughs> But, yeah, a lot of people didn't play this, and considering it was basically outdated at release, people didn't know what to make of it. But me, and people who have familiarity with this game, you might have a soft spot for it. And I don't think it's that bad. I like it. It's two-player, it's got all these hidden stages and stuff. Look, there's a cat princess. Let's see. Oh yeah! I love her! Mm-hmm. She can uh, turn you to stone, I think. So watch out. Eh, it's worth the risk. It's also a whole bunch of hidden items. You'll notice there's a little item list that starts appearing underneath the, uh, the HUD at the top. They give you things like improved punches, eventually a sword. A lot of stuff that the game does not explain itself, so make sure you read the manual. Uh, does this game have two-player? Like, it does. One? Yeah, it's oh, cool. two-player simultaneous. Oh. 
And mostly I want to play a little bit of it so I can see, show you just how far this series evolved. Which is to say, not so much, but we'll, we'll get there. Also, the question mark balls. If you punch them, you either get an X or a money bag. Mm. You collect six money bags, like it says in the HUD. You can push A and B together. And you summon a P, which does this. You can tell everyone to go fuck themselves. <laughs> get their asses, Danny. Get them, get them. So, so yeah, on the surface, the game is not explained too well and is kind of obtuse in that early 80s kind of way. Mm -hmm. But if you have the manual and you're willing to put in the time, there's a lot in this game. Like, more than you would ever expect. Alright, multiple people have mentioned that one of the noises in this sounds like it was ripped from Kung Fu directly. Yes, it uses that same sound library. Uh, the punching, the kicking, the oop when you die. That's all from Kung Fu. Beautiful. In fact, Culture Brain and Nintendo kinda had a link because they apparently were involved in the development of Arcade Donkey Kong? Excuse me? That's something I would instantly disbelieve if it was on Wikipedia, but it was in Nintendo Power, so I don't know what to believe now. <laughs> I... who knows anymore? That's, uh, that's also in Taizo's thread if you're so inclined. Yeah, extremely simple. Probably didn't go over too well at the time in North America, but... As a kid who managed to scam a cheap game from his parents, I was happy. Now let's fight a boss. Alright. Boss levels are cool, because they're exactly like the regular levels, with one key difference. First of all, there's lightning that comes out and kills you instantly. Okay, That's good. nice. Realistic. And then, every so often, the enemies take a break, and then this guy appears. And you have to dodge him, because it's almost impossible to kill him, and he'll kill you, like, instantly. Hey! It's really cool. What the fuck happened to the Michelin Man? <laughs> He's pissed. I'm curious to know if anyone else has culture brain memories. <laughs> like, did anyone ever actually play Magic of Sherazad or something back in the day? I- okay, I have seen people in our mentions and stuff talk about Magic of Sherazad. Uh, okay. I, I, I can't remember what they said exactly, but my, my culture brain remembers it as them saying it whipped ass, but I may be incorrect. It's probably good. Alright, we've got some folks who played this, too. A lot of folks grew up playing this and the sequels to this game, so it's it's known. Yeah. We even like... have some Flying Warriors fans in chat. Wonderful. Oh, we'll get there. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I think I think we've made our point with Kung Fu Heroes. Give it a chance. It's on Nintendo Switch Online. You'll probably hate it, but that's alright. Mm-hmm. But this was not the end of Super Chinese as we know it because a few years later they made Super Chinese 2 and localized it under the title Little Ninja Brothers. Thank you to Ultima for the 100 bits and yeah, uh, Twitch has a uh, Twitch has replies now in in chat so uh, you can enjoy. You can enjoy. <laughs> and thank you. Now, first of all, you'll notice instead of one or two players, it's RPG and field meeting. Because in 86, Kung Fu Heroes was first released, and a game called Dragon Quest, which was kind of influential. All of a sudden, everyone wanted to be Dragon Quest, including the Kung Fu Heroes, Ryu and Jack. They have names now. This I is also them. two player, which is kind of unusual for an RPG. Select the difficulties. I'm selecting difficulties every day, baby. One day, there was an emergency TV broadcast all throughout China land. <laughs> so yeah, this is that fictionalized China I mentioned before. They have TV technology, but it's still the ancient past. Oh no, they beat up the Emperor. Alright, I know y'all want to let me play, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest, I have a lot of things to juggle today, so... Yeah, Alex, Alex please, has the world on his shoulders right now. <laughs> I'm juggling so much stuff. I do appreciate the show of support. Don't worry, on Friday you're absolutely gonna see me play some fucking games. Not today, <laughs> though. I'm like, please, I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm like, don't let Alex play. Don't let Alex play. So the object of this game, yo, is to collect the uh, seven or eight Bells of Prism. These are gathered all throughout the world, you get them by beating bosses, and then you get to take on the, the final boss or something. Oh, we got our master's private stash. You could count on us, the Little Ninja Brothers. Right. And look at these graphics. Oh, I love them. Beautiful. They're little angels. Wow, he took off. Nice. Aesthetically, this reminds me of another game that almost got released here in the States called Taro's Quest. 
because uh, Jalico also had their own ninja characters that they really wanted to bring over. There was something like five different cancelled Taro games. No, Buns can't play two-player. He's busy in the other room, but... He's been a little angel lately. I bet, he, I bet he'd play. Oh, he's been very sweet. He's been just so cuddly. Anyways. What do we want? Uh, we gotta equip ourselves, so let's get the Iron Claw. And also a shield, I guess. I like the lip flaps here. And a robe, because we want to be fancy. So essentially what this is, is a very, very lightweight RPG mixed with, uh, well, you'll see. You've been watching TV. Hey, I like this song. I'm jamming. That's just good advice. Mm hmm That's also true. Don't kill people with a sword that you can't kill with your fists. Yeah, you can go to convenience stores to get passwords. It's this odd mixture of uh, ancient history plus modern culture. It's... you'll see. Oh, this is, uh, this is our next town we have to visit, the town of Delicious. Mm. Sounds tasty. This is where you get your password. Unfortunately, this game does not have battery save. You gotta use passwords. And what do you say we go out and get in some fights before we move on? Sounds like a good idea. I love getting in fights. Remember, kill not with a sword that you can kill with your fists and feet. Now me, I never saw this at any store back in the day. I probably would have gone apeshit knowing that there was an RPG based on <laughs> Kung Fu Heroes. And check it out, when you get into a fight, oh my god, it's just Kung Fu Heroes again. They merged Kung Fu Heroes with a damn RPG. Almost the exact same gameplay, just a little bit... It's a little bit faster. I wouldn't even say more refined, because it's actually a little bit clunky compared to the original. But still, it's an RPG, and that's what kids wanted back then. Any kids care to confirm? Yeah, see, I've seen this being compared to Faria. Oh yeah, yeah. There was a lot of uh, strange RPGs coming out in America at the time. What's in here? Oh! It's the Y Stallion! Hey! Well. Some real jams in this game, I like this. Oh god, his lips. Yeah, they're oh, horrible. Oh, his teeth. Oh, I don't like that. Punch rocks, get burger, is what he's saying, essentially. Okay, okay. And, guess what? It's also track and field. Man, this game has everything. Yeah, culture brain? In a negative light, you can say that they didn't really have any focus, they were a jack of all trades and a master of none, but considering how simple games were back in the day, it's kind of a miracle they even tried, and I would say this is at least a little bit successful, because this game's pretty fun. <laughs> and of course, if you were playing co-op, you'd be uh, competing with your friend. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Look at that face. He's so happy! Mm -hmm, I also became more powerful with P. Serger? And no, we haven't gotten to the ferrets yet. We're at, uh, we're doing it series by series, so we're starting off yeah. with the Ninja Brothers. Ferrets are the end of the story, but mm -hmm. we have to work our way there. Mm -hmm. Okay, he said go east to get to Delicious. It's more likely we're going to get into a fight before then. Run away! Oh good. Sometimes they can block you. Mm. This reminds me a lot of uh, those weird tennis and racing RPGs they made for PC Engine. Yeah! Yeah, I'm getting that vibe too! Yeah! In that it's kind of simplified and off-kilter, but also really fun. The mayor's taking all the food for himself! Man! 
Uh, real quick, thank you to 2 Siri for the uh, 25 months tier 2 resub. Thank you so very Holy much. Crap. Really do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Enjoy getting your brain cultured. I bet you can already feel your brain expanding from watching this stream. Ah, roasted slugs, boiled lizards, salted spiders, they're all very good. Mm. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, roasted slugs do sound kinda good. Yeah, this is what they're reduced to. They have to eat bugs and shit because the mayor <laughs> stole all the food for himself. Let's see if we can find this mayor. This is Nettie's. But they have nothing because of the mayor. It's gotta be up here, right? He's in a dungeon. That's right, this game has dungeons. I will say this. I wish mayors had to live in dungeons. I'm sorry. Maybe you're a cool mayor and all, but it would be cool if you all had to live in dungeons. Hey, there he is. Oh, he's gonna treat us to all the oh, finest nice. meals. Nice of him. Holy shit, that looks good. Oh my god. He's nothing like the people said he was. He's a pretty nice man. Hey, I just want to say I love the writing yum, this yum, game. Yum, 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 yum. Huh? I feel sleepy. Oh no. I am in the prison. Oh shit. Thank you real quick to Raccoon Violet for the 13-month reason. Raccoon Violet says... Brains have culture? Some of them do. They mine do. doesn't, but maybe mine will after the show. Secretly, it was Tubba Tummy of the Yoma clan. Mm. He cast a spell on us, and he's gonna change us into meatballs and eat us up. <laughs> <laughs> so from here, we find the villagers who are all being held captive, and they want to be fattened up so they can be eaten. <laughs> There's an escape route, but everyone here is too fat to pass through. Okay. Uh, luckily, the little ninja brothers aren't too fat, and we can go on a journey to okay. save the villagers before they're cannibalized. And yes, Tubitummy absolutely is one of the uh, Jellicle Cats Revenant. Definitely. So from here, we gotta find a way to rescue people and take down Tubitummy. But I think this is a fine time to introduce another key part of the Culture Brain uh, culture. <laughs> Because way back in the day, Culture Brain had really elaborate magazine ads in GamePro, as I mentioned, some in EGM. And not just that, they also produced multi-page comic books, including several based on Little Ninja Brothers. So why don't we experience the story of Delicious and see how that shakes out via the medium of comic books. All right, one second here. I just need to do one thing real quick. Why don't you actually leave the sound on for this, too? Okay. Uh, turn that back up. Maybe turn it down just a touch. Let me just adjust a few other things. Now I love these. I saw, I read like all of these because I had a Game Pro subscription. All right, here we go. Okay. Jack so and Ryu, the two ninja boys in China Land, took off for Yokan to defeat the Yoma clan. Uh, our comical ninja action shall begin now. All right. All right, Alex, you can read all that because it's too small for me to see. <laughs> Gosh, we were full of energy when we left the Mentor now. I'm so hungry from walking. Look, we are in Delicious, the town of gourmet foods. Let's go find a restaurant. Welcome to Nettie's. What? You don't have any more food? Oh no! I'm sorry. The mayor took all the food away from us. McRonald's next door has the same problem. Man, why did he do that? What a crook. Let's go pay him a visit. Even Mick Ronalds is out of food. Mm -mm. Welcome to my mansion, my friend. I am the mayor of Delicious. You must be very hungry. I'll treat you to all the delicious food here. Oh, yeah? Look! Look at all the food! Alright, seems to be going good for them, you know? I, I don't know what, what could possibly happen. I all think right. we know what's gonna happen. Man, that's funny. He's a nice person. Yeah, he's very generous. I'm getting sleepy. Oh, you're up. I'll never forgive the Yoma clan. Why did they capture such nice boys? Oh, Mayor, where are we? The guy you met wasn't the mayor. We're in a prison? What's going on? He was Tubitummy of the Yoma clan in disguise. Why, stilly boys! Eat well and get fat and I'll eat you up. He'll be a treat for me. Mm, I can hardly wait. <laughs> See? Darn it, we should have been more careful. I can't believe how fast they expanded their powers. Hey, boys. Escape from hey, this boys. hole. <laughs> We're too fat to go through. You can make it. Thank you. We'll come back to rescue you. Let's go, Ryu. Careful. 
I can't see anything. There's light. See, hey. what I really like about this is it's a direct interpretation of what happens in the game, so this is technically the most accurate magazine advertisement of all time. Hey, the comic series will differ slightly from the NES and Game Boy. Got it. Only slightly, though. Only oh. slightly. Oh, good. This one. Scroll all right, down. scroll back up. Yeah, this one scrolled down. Sorry about that. All right. Finally, we're out. Where are we? Let's ask her. Ooh. There you are. I'm the savior, Mochi Mouse. Oh, no, please. <laughs> Wait, I came all the way from paradise to save Chinaland and help the two brave boys. Is that true, old lady? Now, let's play the stare down game. If you win, I'll give you something special. No, thank you. Wait, wait, old lady. Watch your mouth. All right, are you ready? I think I read this out of order. Sorry, guys. It's fine. One, it's it's two, not too clear. One, two, three, start. Look at those faces. When you fight against Hubba Tummy, use this charm. Hold on. You won! Here's what I promised to give you. Take it. Thank you. When you fight against Hubba Tummy, use this charm. It has the magic power to break his meat bun spell. Hey, we're back, Hubba Tummy. Now, he did previously threaten to turn us into meat buns and eat us up. Hey, and game... Now... Sorry. Go ahead. Game Boy game with the same title, please acknowledge this. I'm sorry, told me to acknowledge it. <laughs> okay, acknowledge it's been it. acknowledged. Okay. Don't worry, Culture Brain. We've acknowledged you. All right, let's go back down here. How's you, this shake out? All right, you sneaky rascals, get them! Come on, get my spell. Your meat buns. Where's the charm? Should I give up? Hey, we broke your spell. <laughs> hey, look, an orange prism bell. Thank you, brave boys. This is a present for you. Please accept my thanks. In the next issue, they'll travel through Chili City and encounter the evil queen. Hey, Danny, rush to your local toy store. I will. Don't you worry. Beautiful. Now, believe it or not, I think this was my first experience with uh, manga-styled art, as they say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These freaking advertisements in GamePro magazine promoting cultured brain games. That's how I was introduced to manga, and that's why I love it. It's beautiful. So let's move on. Okay. Uh, Culture Brain was active on NES as well as Game Boy, because of course they wanted some of that Game Boy money. Let's go ahead and load up that Game Boy Core and see what the little ninja brothers are up to with the Ninja Boy series. Oh, Ninja Boy. I'm doing this on FPGA Mister, by the way. I always wanted to do streams like this, but like the, the Wii was so cumbersome when it comes to switching systems. And the Mister is a little bit cumbersome, but much less so. So let's go ahead and load up. Uh, here it is, Ninja Boy. Now, I mostly remember this game from being featured on uh, Jeremy Parrish's Game Boy Works series. He took a big old diarrhea dump all over this game. <laughs> uh, real quick, I just need to adjust the screen here. Okay. Thank you for your patience. So is that Jack or Ryu? Um, it's probably Jack. Is that Jack or Diane? <laughs> it's a little ditty. That's good. Wait, this is a little widescreen. Hold on. And check it out. It's literally just Kung Fu Heroes, but shrunk down. It's a little bit more refined, I say, as I take a depth there. The character graphics are a little more detailed. This has a good few years on Kung Fu Heroes, so they can step things up a little bit. Personally, I like the remix soundtrack. Still very similar. It's got these bonus levels with the E-Balls you gotta collect. You can also get apples for points, if you care about that. Alright, people keep also not just mentioning the Kung Fu sound effects, but I'm seeing more mentions of the Super Mario uh, sound effects that this, these games use. Yeah, they steal the 1-Up sound effect, they steal... Well, I shouldn't say steal, considering they had at least some kind of relationship with Nintendo. That's true, maybe that's why they were able to use it. Yeah. Who knows, really. Oh, I should mention, from Taizo's thread, uh, in Japan, Culture Brain is kind of considered... They ride the line in between Kusoge and genuine passion projects. To the point where a lot of the information out there is shit posts, essentially. <laughs> Just people making fun of Culture Brain, and in particular impersonating one of the two founders. See, if, you're, if you ever see any quotes attributed to Yume Nosuke, one of the founders, uh, it may or may not be real, and there's no way to tell. Yeah, take it with a huge grain of salt. <laughs> also, I also enjoy learning that one of the other founders spent his last few years defending Culture Brain on Twitter from people who would call them Kusoke. <laughs> I read a couple of his tweets, and he's just like, Look, you ever make games? You think this is easy? 
<laughs> I, I, it's pretty good. I really, 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 really support that, though. I, I really do, honestly. Unfortunately, he's since passed away, which kind of leaves the whole culture brain thing like this mystique we'll never really know for sure about. <laughs> Like, anything you hear about the company, you can think, well, that's probably true. Such as the fact that a lot of people posited they were a Yakuza front. I... Learning that, like, in Taizo's thread, that they were both, uh... Childhood friends, and, and seeing what Yumanosuke, uh... Yumanosuke dressed like, I don't know, I get that vibe, but I'm yeah, not gonna... Yeah, there's a good picture of him in sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Let me post a Taizo thread in case anyone, uh, coming in missed that. Yeah, post that up again, because... Again, the only English language resource on what the company was like, as far as I know. Now, if you don't have much experience with the original Kung Fu Heroes, you may think this game is a big piece of crap. But, personally, I, I kind of like it. I think it's a big improvement in a lot of ways. The movement's more, uh, natural. And though the screen's zoomed in, it still... it still plays well. Yes, exactly. We are also a Yakuza front, in that yeah. I like to be in front of the game Yakuza, am I right? Huh? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Yakuza, like a dragon, coming out later this year. <laughs> Reserve your copy today. Pay a Sega. You think I should get in line for the PlayStation 5? They, uh, they started up, uh, Sony announced that they're taking, uh, not taking pre-orders, but they're taking the right to pre-order it, without announcing the price. So that's cool. Anyway, that's your modern gaming news of the day. I... I excuse me? I'm just saying, Culture Brain, they were more honest than modern companies. And I'll stand by that, even if I can't back it up. Mm -hmm. Now, in addition to Ninja Boy, a couple years later, they made a sequel. Guess what it's called? Um, uh, Cool Ninjas, Ninja Guy, Ninja Grown Up, Ninja Man. Completely wrong, Ninja Boy 2. Ah, uh, damn it. Has a very similar effect from the NES game Little Ninja Brothers, and in fact the same art, which may s uh, send warning bells chiming in your head. You may think, oh my god, is this just a direct port? And the answer is... kinda? This is a canonical sequel, they left China Land. Here they are in the Marco, Marco Polar Clustars. They're in space now. Excuse me? They're enjoying a space trip with oh, their friends. They look so happy, I love them. Suddenly a monstrous battleship came into sight. Okay. And we have to escape via life capsule. Leaving our crew to an unknown fate. Where are we? I don't know, some odd planet, I guess. <laughs> thanks, thanks for you, real useful. Oh no, mommy! Knock that off. I'm sorry. Darn it, the glands! Oh no, not my glands! So here you are on some planet, I don't know, there's your crash spaceship. Oh my god, one step and you get into a random battle. That is some classic shit. Okay, I, I like the glands. Look at them. And what oh this god. is, is it's very similar to the gameplay in Little Ninja Brothers, but not exactly. They added a lot of things, like being able to stand on enemies' heads, which you actually need to do a lot, because some of the enemies, their heads stretch upwards like a giraffe, and you gotta hop on another enemy to get high enough to punch them in the face. I love them, though! Look at their little hats! They're so cute! I like how expressive everyone is in these games. Like, it's... these are tiny, tiny graphics, but you can still see their faces of, uh, surprise and pain, which is what the series is all about. This is a series about surprise, delight, and pure pain. Mm hmm Oh, and of course there's level ups and stuff along with equipment. Let's head in this village here. And you would think if this was a direct port, all the dialogue would be the same, but... No. This is actually its own unique story. Game Boy isn't fun? What are you talking about? I like that it had the trademark there. Thank you, Culture Brain. Kid, get out of the way. Is China Land a well-known country? Of course it is. We're okay without our parents, but we've got to have Super NES. So do I! <laughs> so yeah, this is a little bit scaled back pseudo-sequel to Little Ninja Brothers. And they made 
uh, counting the Super Famicom ones, at least six or seven of these games, which are all very similar and follow the same formula. There's convenience stores. This is a village where all the adults have been kidnapped and there's just kids. Mm. They're fine, because they have Super NES. Oh, good, good. I want to buy the Norm uniform. My name's Norm now. <laughs> Welcome, Norm. Now, by now, you've probably gotten an idea of the common themes in Culture Brain games. The idea of China Land. The, uh, I haven't mentioned it before, but there's these horned enemies named Tusk Soldiers. They share that between this series and another series that we're going to see very shortly. In fact, I think there's... They all kind of take place in the same sort of shared universe, but not really. Well, I like the Hackalands. They're different. Yeah. They look angry. <laughs> <laughs> like tossing people. Now me, I've never actually seen this game for Game Boy. I think it may be pretty rare. And though the first game is pretty cheap in cartridge form, if you want to get a complete copy, that's like a thousand dollars or so. Oh! Because Game Boy complete in box copies are very expensive. I'm glad you found me. Samurai happy. Samurai sad. Find my fan, would you? All right, 30 seconds. Now here, instead of the athletic-style games, you have to punch open boxes to find shit. Kind of a downgrade, I guess, but it's Game Boy, so they had to make some concessions. There's the thing. Hit detection, also very particular in this game. And you get stuck on shit all the time. Well, I don't think I'm gonna find it. But luckily, they make you do it over and over and over again until you finally do succeed. <laughs> I'm gonna give this one more attempt before we move on. Alright. Good luck to Danny. But your takeaway from this series is it started out extremely simply as essentially an arcade port, and then they just kept bolting on more and more and more gameplay mechanics as the years wore on. Uh, some of it successful, some not. But regardless, these games still have a kind of charm to them. This is very charming. Yeah. Oh god. Hey, this... There it is. Hey, you found it! Good. Holy shit. Well done, Samurai well done! Happy. Samurai happy! Samurai happy? No, Danny happy. And from there, the story goes on. And we're about to experience the final US chapter in the Ninja Boys series, but... You know what? I think it's time for another comic. I agree. Alex, take it away. Alright, so this is Little Ninja Comic 2, and I just want to say, this one's pretty good. This one owns. I went, I downloaded like 20 different GamePro magazines just looking for this comic, and I was so glad I found it. Alright, so let's get started here. So, Little Ninja Boys are back. Little brothers, not boys, sorry. They're well, boys. Okay, they're, they're boys. I don't know. They're, they're, they are who they are, baby. Alright, so we're starting off, uh... They're saying, hey, the Yuma clan took over our China, our country China land. We left our mentor's training call in my in Mount Epin to defeat the Yuma clan and bring that peace back to the people of China land. Something is weird here, don't you think? Look at these goofballs. Excuse me. Hold on. Excuse me. Hey, welcome to Chili Silly. No, City Silly. No, what am I saying? Chili City Jolly Chili City Chili Beans. Oh, no, I'm confused. He's not with it. Hold on. Let's find someone sane. We we must find out where the other bell is. How about there? Hello! And here's the greatest thing I've seen in my entire fucking life. Yo, how's your brain? I'm the savior, Moonlit Tiger! That's the best thing I've ever seen in my Yo, life. Yo! How's your brain? Uh, it's okay. It's, it's a okay. Little, it's a little bit cultured. That's me. That's me. The savior, can he save himself? <laughs> what did you say, boy? I know why you are here, but I don't have to tell you anything. Well, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Please, Savior, tell us what you know. All right, I'll tell you something very special. People in this town act so stupid. Hey, is Wow, that's, that's good information. And yes, he does look a little bit like Johnny Turbo. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like him so much. All right. We know, it's obvious. Shh, be quiet. Listen, you must understand what happened. Because of the evil queen, a Yoma clan boss, the mayor dances naked every day. Duh. Ridiculous. I want you to defeat the evil queen and get the antidote. It will cure the people's silliness. Look at the Water Lily Palace. The Queen of the Water Lily Spirits used to live there. The evil queen now lives there. 
That's the whole story. Now, will you do it for me and the people? I'll leave it to us. I'll do it for you, uh, crazy ninja cat. Am I beautiful? Tell me, who's the fairest of them all? You are, your highness. Rumble, rumble. What's the matter? Here we are, you ugly monster. We Whoa. are the ninja brothers. Wow, ugly monster. How dare they? They're very disrespectful. And once again, the comic series will differ slightly from the NES and Game Boy. But Got it is it. available for your NES and also your Game Boy. Mm-hmm. Here. An ugly monster? Did you call me an ugly monster? You'll be sorry. You all right, Jack? Oh no, he's caught it. Uh-oh, he, ca he, he caught the stupid curse. You too, be stupid. That's me. That's, that's what happens every morning. Take this, I'll cast a spell on you. Be stupid. <laughs> you can't use the same twi trick twice. This m mirror shield reflects your spell. Now it's my turn. Take these throwing stars. Darn it, I can't throw a spell on him. And then she scratches him. Ouch, she scratched me. <laughs> well, it's my turn again to make a counterattack. Take this. And he cuts off her clothing. Oh my god. Darn it, I can't throw a spell at him. Hardcore oh, nudity in a Game Pro magazine. Oh no, he tore my dress to pieces. And this is it. Thank you, Ninja Brothers. Well, everyone's back to normal now. Oh, thank God. Let's see. I'm the queen of the water lily spirits. Thank you for recovering me from the... from my Recovering my palace from the evil queen. Well, Moonlit Tiger Ryu is back to normal after taking the antidote. But how do you treat all the people in the town? Ah, oh, it's easy. Pour it in the spring. This is the people's drinking water. Ooh. Good thinking. People's drinking, people's drinking water. That's a good idea. I'll let you do it. You are the saviors of our country. <laughs> yeah, it's idiot power. <laughs> Here's a reward. I heard that there's another one in Yokan, the capital of China Land. Go. Look, one of the bells of Prism. Thank you. We've got three more bells to go. And I like, hey. I like how it displays the bells on there like it's an actual video game progression thing. Hey, rush to your local toy store. Got it. Beautiful. Everybody, rush to your local toy store where you can pick up copies of Little Ninja Brothers or Ninja Boy. And if you want to read the rest of these, there's either six or seven or eight chapters of this across multiple issues of Game Pro from 91, I believe. So go to your local archive.org if you want to see the continuing adventures of the Lin Little Ninja Brothers. Yes, agreed. Go there in general. All right. But it's now the future. 16-bit is upon us, and the Little Ninja Brothers have come to the Super Nintendo. They are all grown up. <laughs> Please don't put it that way. Okay. I've had enough Rugrats. <laughs> we are going to play... Oh, uh, what's this one called? This Super one Ninja is... Boy is Super... what it's called. This was the last entry in the series to be released in North America. In Japan it was called Super Chinese World, and there were several sequels that never got released over here. We'll go into that in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But here it is, the Super Ninja Boy. Bam. Oh, this game loves changing resolutions, by the way. Just a warning. Love it. Whoa! Oh god, my face! Whoa! Wow. Power of the Super NES. I need my ass kicked in real time. I'm pretty sure that's the exact same art they used for Little Ninja Brothers. But it's 16-bit. Let's start the game. No, it's not. Stream <laughs> over. Now, just like the NES one, this is also two players, and it takes place in China Land. And you may think, okay, this one has to be a port of one of the existing games. And once again, nope, it's its own original thing. This time, the spacemen are projecting 3D images in the sky. Cool. Oh, but they're on a universal peace mission. It's Robodoc. Nope. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> yeah, China Land sure gets its uh, gets attacked a lot. He became very popular. He <laughs> arose as a fascist leader. <laughs> the Rubadoc boom was on, as the game puts it. Mm -hmm. Quietness returned. Oh, how's Yokan? I don't know. How's your Yokan? Oh, 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 damn it! So I missed good. it up. <laughs> How's Yokan? <laughs> oh, boo. And just like every other game in this series we've played, it starts you right outside the first village. And it looks a hell of a lot like what we just played. Look at these tiny, tiny people. They're babies. 
This didn't look too bad on Game Boy, but here on Super Nintendo, this would have looked a little... primitive. Only a few hard workers go out with girls. I wish I could go. <laughs> Does he say he can't go because he's not a hard worker? Many girls want to go out with me, yeah. I guess that guy's working hard. Yeah. This continues the tradition that you love from the previous Ninja Brothers games, including uh, buying equipment, talking with people. The skin gauntlet? Yeah. Excuse me? I got a skin gauntlet. Yeah, there it is. We're good. So you can go around here talking to folks, get an idea of what your mission is. I think what you gotta do here is go to the north of the city. Oh, the men have been taken. Mm. That's why many girls want to go out with that guy. Because mm, there's no other guys to go with, I get it. Mm -hmm. Even if you fall into a hole, you can restart with an egg. Mm. A delicious egg. I think this is the leader of the bunch. We know them well. Oh, he's in big trouble. Robbers. They broke into the town and took jewelry and the prime workers away. Oh, Our Amazon man. deliveries are just... They're stacking up. Oh, no. All right, a prophet, you say. Well, let's go talk to this uh, digital prophet. <laughs> and yeah, I'm... I'm oh, this, this is no true, Damas. Mmm. I'm glad that there are a uh, Super Ninja Boy and Little Ninja Brother stands in chat. Good. I like this a lot, honestly. I like this writing a lot. We have to go find Rick. That's a familiar name. We'll come back to that in a second. Okay. We believe your words, mister. Remember, it's no true Domus. The Great. So let's head outside and see what the battle scenes look like. Anyone want to venture a guess on what they look like? You know, I I bet they are going to be uh, they're going to be in 3D. They're going to have, to have mode seven. Yeah. It's it's going to be beautiful, beautiful scaled up sprite art. Maybe mm -hmm. some orchestral style music. Uses the SA1 chip to mm -hmm. uh, render these kids with extra muscles. Oh, here we go. Let's fight him. And it's just a Game Boy game. <laughs> <laughs> so, so by this point, you get oh, the I idea. Culture Brain did very, very few things, but they iterated on them constantly. Whether it be on NES, or Game Boy, or Super Nintendo. And that's not even the end. We didn't even see half this series here in the States. But this is the very last one we got. Once again, it's two-player, which, again, is a pretty neat selling point. But, in terms of technical performance, this is not so great. You'll notice it's not 60 frames per second. It's, uh, look at these graphics. I, I kind of love this, though. This makes, uh, Inindo look like Final Fantasy VI, am I right? No one's gonna get that. <laughs> I want to say the captioning service did not know what Inindo was. So Damn that's them. They did know Final Fantasy VI, so that's also good. Oh, look at that Kappa! Oh, they caught up with us. Oh, I like these bird brains. Still, they say, go with what you know, and that is exactly what Culture Brain did. They knew what they knew, and they stuck with it. Get their ass, Danny. It keeps the Ninja Boy 2 mechanics of being able to pick dudes up and throw them. I think you can also stand on dudes, too. So it's a fun formula, it's just, you know, it's it's been done, like, a lot. <laughs> And I guess by that point, Culture Brain America decided, you know what, that's that's probably enough. Yeah. But they did have plans to release Super Chinese World 2 here in the States, because check this shit out. Look at that. Wow. How Hold amazing on. would this have been? Let me center this a little bit here. That is... Galactic Defender, the supercharged sequel to Super Ninja Boy. We almost got it. We were so close. Uh, but it never ended up happening, unfortunately. And what that is where the story of the Kung Fu Heroes, also known as the Little Ninja Brothers, that's where it ends, here in the States. They had a good run. 
They did. They, they did. They had more sequels than a lot of other NES games did. Uh, hell, there was only two DuckTales games. But for now, let's move on to something a little bit different. Because Culture Brain was in the gaming industry, and the gaming industry is all about making that money. Mm -hmm. And what makes money? That's right. Baseball games. <laughs> Uh, people who watch Crontendo, this chronological series of the NES's library, will know that Dr. Sparkle, the creator, has long been suffering with many, many, many baseball games released for the Famicom. If you thought there were a bunch released here in the States, there were seriously like four to five times as many released for the Famicom. And of course, Culture Brain took their, uh, they took, they took a, a whack at it, as you would say, in baseball, mm -hmm. with this game here. Baseball Simulator 1000. Music here is pretty good. Yeah, hey, I like this. Let's crank it. Nice. Now, the thing about all those different baseball games I mentioned is they're all exactly the same. None of them tried anything different. Uh, ever since Namco started their Famista series, every other publisher was like, yep, let's just do that. No need to add anything else. Oh, God. Culture Brain, though? They wanted to do things a little bit differently, as you may uh, see a hint of right here. Let's go ahead and start this up. Right. Sorry folks, I'm just adjusting the screen, because it's kind of going all over the place. Yeah, props to Alex for keeping up with the technical side here. Thanks. Now you can play a regular game of baseball, just like Bases Loaded, just like Famista, just like anything else with the Atlantic and Northern Leagues. Or you can try the Ultra League. Let's be this team versus the Homers. The, the Homers? Let's uh, play in grass, which appears to be at Disneyland. Hey! That is at Disneyland! That rocks! Okay. It's Hee Ho game number one. <laughs> Jack Frost would be he proud. Hee Ho! Here's where you pick your pitcher. And you'll notice all those little icons underneath those characters. That will come into play very shortly. Oh, there's an ad for Flying Dragon. <laughs> a game we're going to see pretty soon. Okay, I'm batting right now. <laughs> Did you see that shit? Yeah. So yeah, this has Ultra Baseball, which gives you superpowers both for pitching and for hitting. The pitching powers I fucking hate. Especially that stop one. Don't do it. Don't do it again. Bam! But luckily, I have my own powers. Like that one, which fucks with the shadow underneath the baseball, making it harder to catch. Or you can turn into a whirlwind and hit the ball really hard into the stands. You know, Cool Hair, you say you, you say you want a Culture Brain Stadium? Well, you can. there is a Culture Brain Stadium. It's called your local library. Wow. But don't go to your local library right now, please. Oh, this, this one's good. Check this out. See, this one relies on the ball being caught while it's flying. I hope that happens. BAM! <laughs> Eat shit, motherfucker! <laughs> now there were there were a few Famicom baseball games that tried something a little different. What the fuck? I love games now. Uh, so far, the only one to come to mind is uh, Softball Tengoku. I'm sure there's others, but this one, I think this one makes the ball slippery. This game rocks! What the hell, Danny? For a lot of people, this is their favorite NES baseball game, and for good reason, because it's just so silly. Oh, a bomb! Alright. I'm gonna hit a bomb into the outfield. This is what baseball is now. Oh no, come on, let me do it! No! You don't get to see the bomb. Oh, the outfielders man. get to live another day. Personally, I like hitting the bomb into the crowd, because you're like, wow, how many people did that kill? <laughs> that's dark, Danny! Yeah, that's baseball. That one made the ball bounce off in a completely unpredictable direction, where it just rolls all the way to the fences. It's being called Blaze Ball, Blurns Ball. It's a little bit Blaze Ball, yeah. They don't exactly follow the rules here. There are, there are no rules. No rules, just right, Culture Brain. I'm surprised they didn't make more of these, considering there was freaking... Oh, that's the Earthquake Ball. 
considering there was four freaking bases loaded games for NES, why not? Why just one baseball simulator game? Oh, now the dude's crying. He couldn't pick it up. <laughs> what does this one do? Oh, this is the that one where it's hard to predict where it's gonna land. This rocks, Danny. This rocks. I have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna lose gamer cred here, but I've never seen this before. So it's really good. And it was fairly well known back in the day, but it seems to have been kind of forgotten since then, which is unfortunate. Oh, I love this ominous baseball music. I love ominous baseball music. Mm -hmm. Also gotta emphasize just how normal every other Famicom baseball game is. Like, there was a game based on Major League, the uh, R-rated baseball comedy, and that was just a regular-ass Famista-style baseball game. Hey, home run! Hey! Grab! Oh, this isn't Disneyland. This is, uh, this is somewhere else. This is... this is... Congrats, everyone. Or maybe it is, maybe it's Walt Disney World in the alternate universe where they built their, uh, Russia Pavilion in Epcot. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. AU Baseball. I love it. <laughs> okay, well, I managed to score eight points in one ending. Uh, runs, as they call them. And, of course, as the pitcher, you also get your own special techniques. This game's badass, but we, we, game. we gotta move on to the Super Nintendo version, because they did in fact make a version for Super Nintendo. Yeah, unfortunately there were only two Baseball Simulator 1000 games released here in the States. I think there was a couple more released in Japan. Alright, what's the... so we're going to Super NES? Mm-hmm. This is Super Baseball Simulator 1000. Ooh, fancy! That sounded I'm... very dismissive, I'm sorry. <laughs> It also takes some balls to call your game Baseball Simulator <laughs> when it has, like, earthquake pitches and stuff. Oh god, oh god, here it comes! Ah! You may have seen this game on uh, speedrunner PJ DeCesar's stream, because I think he played through a full season one time. Hey, I love this already. And just like NES one, it's very similar. Uh, yeah, let's do a one-inning game. Why not? <laughs> You can just go one inning game? Yeah, we ain't got time. Okay, I like this. We gotta go to the mall. I, I, no no limit on the amount of power I have. Absolutely. Uh, the homers only get 50. It's fair. It is fair. Hey, where are we going? Um, those all sound good. I think they're just Brown Stadium. What is it? We don't know. Okay, let's go to the Brown Stadium. I am man. Mm -hmm. They are calm. Get all the different pitchers who have different pitching abilities. No. Now with extra mode seven. I'm glad it <laughs> wasn't a smash cut this time. And this one looks pretty good. Hey, it does. I have a question though. Yeah. Is it also stupid? Oh, it's very stupid. Nice. Uh -oh. Jesus Christ! 188 mile per hour fastball. Now it's snowing. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> it's, it's fair. Fair ball. <laughs> oh my god! Good news, everyone. Baseball's good again. Hell yeah. Jesus, how do you deal with that? It's uh, just, hey, I'm gonna get a strike now. What the fuck? <laughs> how was... It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> This is baseball. Alright, there it goes. Oh, here it goes. Home run, home run! Home run! We did it. Nice. Outside the stadium, blasted a car in the parking lot. Oh man, home run says gay rights, I love it. <laughs> That's actually a really cool effect. Home runs are gay now. Mm -hmm. Now what's this power I have? Oh, he's, he's throwing the ball low. My weakness. Well, alright. It's the bottom of the first and last inning. Can we win this one? <laughs> 50 pride bits from Orange Wright who says home run, and 25 pride bits from Bad Idea who also says home run. <laughs> home gay run. I love it. That ball exploded when it hit the ground. Culture brain is gay culture now. I agree. I agree. Can I hit it, dude? Will this guy die if I hit him with a super pitch? Let's find out. Danny! 
it went around him. <laughs> How often do you see that in baseball? Bam! Oh, right in the back! He doesn't have a spine anymore. It's fine. Let's see if we can get a couple more outs. I don't want to drag this out, so I'm only going to attempt this for so long. No, 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 no! Oh, it uses some kind of weird baseball controls. Broke his bat! Oh shit! Hey, he's got to deal with a broken bat. How about this? Corners everywhere. Invisible ball. Oldest trick in the book. Excuse me. All right, a hundred pride bits from the Ultima who says this is game computer versus computer is a very entertaining watch. Yeah, I think that's what PJ did. Because <laughs> <laughs> the computers just cheat constantly. But it's it's baseball simulator. Oh, the slowest beanball in the world. All right, Beetle says this is a shonen baseball anime. Yeah, that's the vibes I'm getting. Pretty much. Can we catch it? Yes. Nice. I win. The he's win over the hose. <laughs> Congrats to he's. Congrats to all he's everywhere. Oh, and the sports the sportscaster is thrilled, and uh, from a different art style. <laughs> <laughs> They're from a different game. That's it. We win. That's right. it. That's a full game of Super Baseball Simulator 1000. Congrats, everyone. Get baseball, folks. But here comes the meat of the stream. This up next is the series that Culture Brain is known for. This had more games in the series than even the Ninja Brothers, if you can believe it. In Japan, it was known as Here You No Kin. Over here, it was known as Flying Warriors. First off, we're going to start off with Flying Dragon, the kind of prototypical entry in the series. Okay. This is a before they established the series lore. This is from the same vintage as Kung Fu Heroes. I think it was also 1986, so it's going to be a little bit simple compared to what comes later. But we gotta, we got to set things up. Here we go, Flying Dragon. Ooh. The Secret Scroll. Here you know, Ken is the ultimate kung fu stance. It's better than all the other ones. It gives the impression of a flying dragon. Oh. Like a dragon, as they say. You could think of this as a, the first Yakuza game. The Grand Master, Juan, was, was robbed of the secret scrolls. Oh no! Juan, you gotta keep that shit under wraps. Mm -hmm. This series I completely missed out on. I was only vaguely aware of the Ninja Brothers, but this... I was only aware of this through, again, the advertisements, which we'll get to after this game. The Here You Know Kin series is... I'm pretty sure it's the passion project of one of the Culture Brain founders, Yume Nosuke. Because he puts his name on most of the games. Not this one, though. Flying Dragon. Once again, a kind of a late localization. But if you look on YouTube, if you type in NES Flying, the first result that it suggests is Flying Dragon, not Flying Warriors. So I think this game had a little bit more impact than the sequel, which is kind of unfortunate. It is. Especially because the game looks like, uh... Oh, I love Jeremy. <laughs> it looks like this. Look at this Tose shit. This is just... I love Kung Fu. <laughs> yeah. Each level is endlessly looping, and it has a series of five bosses you have to beat before you can move on. This is one of them. It appears to be a schoolgirl who's throwing paper at us. I just want to say I really love Culture Brain. I am so in on Culture Brain. Are you, are you sold on Culture Brain? That's, that's my main goal for this stream, to sell people on Culture Brain. That and Taizo's thread have, has turned me into a Culture Brain stan. I will be making a Culture Brain fan cam. Uh, that I will put out on Thursday for all you, uh, fellow stands. It's a game where you go around punching stuff, there's hidden items. Again, looping levels, which is kind of a interesting formula, considering that Mario set the platforming template of just being straight left to right. This one, it has these sub-objectives you have to complete in each level. Now, 
order to beat this level, I have to get the five items from beating the bosses. Otherwise, like I said, it loops endlessly. There's the exit. Uh, thank you so much for uh, to uh, Kaibi Torori for the 100 bits. They say, ah, I see you are a brain of culture as well. Yes, we are all <laughs> cultured brains here. By the time you finish watching this stream, your brain will be three times larger. Mm -hmm. uh, please enlarge your head as needed. I like this attack. I like to think he's just screaming. Taking out all I the love that! Oh my, what is that? It's like a little... It's a dragon that's all beak. I it looks love like it. Uh, it was one of the mousers from Ninja Turtles. <laughs> okay, good. I was low on life. Alright, we're doing well here. There's only one more boss I need to beat, and then we can uh, progress to the next part. And you'll never guess what's coming next. Not sure how you get the bosses to come out. I think they just do it when they want to. Hey boss, I'm right here. There we go. Alright, there she is. So this play is kind of clunkily. You push up to jump like it's a dang Amiga game. But that's because you get A and B for punch and kick. Alright, and the exit's right here. How convenient. Oh, he's pleased as shit. Oh, he's so happy! I love him. So after this, you think, alright, the formula's established, this is a 1986 game, it's just gonna be this for the rest of the game. Well, Culture Brain, they were one step ahead of you. Alright. Because what's next... Well done. I commend you for coming. <laughs> okay. Guy. I like how his head scrolls up with the text. Excuse me, I'm on an escalator. <laughs> He's like, whoop, whoop, I love him. So you're like, alright, some kind of mini game or something. Well, no, actually, this is where it turns into a completely different game. Even the sprites are different. They are! And this is where you're introduced to the Flying Dragon formula, which will be in literally every other game released afterward. Kind of weird, because essentially it's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, just done in that distinctive Culture Brain fashion. Mm. So whenever there's a mark on you, you have to hit the D-pad to defend. It's nice enough to give you a little diagram, so you don't even need to read the manual. And now, attacks! Defend! Attack middle! Defend middle! Kick him in the shins! <laughs> You're good at this. You're really kicking that ass. Now I will or say- I that head. I'll say this is different. This is definitely a fighting game formula I haven't seen exactly replicated anywhere else. But it's also kind of clunky, because it's all based on, essentially, QTEs. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can skip this, either. You gotta listen to this old guy every time you play the game. Grandpa, please. These games love training sequences. You do so much training in these games. And look at this! Is this even the same video game? This is... This is just... This is just a fighting game, Danny. Mm-hmm. And here's the weird part. Because guess what became popular in the early 90s? Fighting games. Mm. So Culture Brain had this series ready to go. They almost kind of predicted the fighting game craze, considering they had a series of multiple games that did this. And yet, as we're going to find out, they didn't do much at all to capitalize on it. Unfortunately, Flying Warriors, aka Flying Dragon, could not compete with Street Fighter 2. Even though by all means, they, they were ahead of the game. They could have refined it a little bit, they just didn't really want to. Maybe it was not in Yumanosuke's plan. Maybe he was just like, nope, it has to be like this. If it's not like this, we're not gonna do it. That's Culture Brain, baby. Possibly run by the Yakuza. <laughs> Please don't kill us for that. We're very nice men. <laughs> I, I said possibly. I'm not. I'm not passing judgment. I love the Yakuza. Yeah, we, we love the game. Love the Yakuza people. one, two, mm -hmm. uh, not so much three, four, five, six, zero. Zero is a good one. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to the... I'm actually really looking forward to Like a Dragon, which I know I'm going to do, like, play, like, for an hour and be like, what a great game, and then move on. Yeah. But it looks cool. It looks cool. So it goes on like this. There's seriously, like, three battles you have to fight in a row, and they're all kind of stilted, but still pretty cool, considering this is 86 in Japan. And even for 88, I think this would have been pretty neat to play here in the States. It's pretty different, yeah. But Culture Brain really, really, really believed in this series. Uh, for example, considering these games barely changed over their many-year history. And they had a sequel in development. In fact, two sequels were released in Japan, Here You No Ken 2 and 3. And when it came time to release them in the States, they decided, you know what, let's make a completely different game based on the parts from Here You No Ken 2 and 3. Let's make this the ultimate expression of what is now called Flying Dragon. And ins to ensure that people find out what this is, let's put a fucking 16-page comic book in GamePro. Okay, before we get to the comic real quick, the Ultimo uh, gives us 100 bits and says, What about Yakuza Dead Souls, Danny? Oh, that one's good, too. I love I love all Yakuza. All right, we doing this? Yeah, we're doing this. Oh boy. So this is this is a long one, so yeah. bear with me with this one. Now, this is one that I saw back in the day. This was my first introduction to Flying Warriors. I never ended up seeing or renting or playing any of these games until much later on, but I was familiar with the multi-chapter saga that was in Game Pro magazine. Okay. Starting with the first chapter, which is, again, literally 16 pages. Can you imagine how much that cost? Like, Scary Larry bought a new Lamborghini based on that money, probably. <laughs> but All here right. it is, chapter one of the Flying Warrior Saga. Alex, take it away. Beautiful. Look, look at this art. Look at this Americanized art. Oh, they look great. They're so happy. Look at that culture brain. Beautiful. All right. Okay. Now, if Little Ninja Brothers was Dragon Ball, this is Dragon Ball Z. It has much less dialogue, but a greater focus on action. Alright, let me start here. It began as a red twinkle in the night sky. As the star hurled towards the earth and became brighter, people started to worry. As the star became brighter and brighter, people looked up and began to worry. This may be an omen. As it plummeted towards the earth, people panicked. Yeah. Yuki Ho. Yes, uh, Scary Larry's Lamborghini was called the Larry Gini. Go ahead. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a place far away where the greatest kung fu masters have secretly gathered, a young man was found and brought up and trained by these masters. He became an expert and is now more powerful than his masters. His name is Rick Stalker. Yeah. Cool name. I don't know about that name. He's a stalker of Rick's. Watch mm. out, Rick's. Watch out, Rick. All right. Rick yeah. Derringer, your days are numbered. Hmm? Yeah, Rek, huh? This is all great sound effects. Huh. I love it. I'm going to scroll through this real quick. Oh. Yeah, this one's going to be easy to read. <laughs> I sense someone watching me. Rek Stalker. He was raised by Master Gen at the Rio Kiho and was taught all the secret Kung Fu techniques, but there are still other secrets that he is has is yet to learn. No, no, Dick Stalker. That's a, that's a porno site. All right. The Tusk Soldiers, mysteriously, mysterious beings from the Dark Dimension that possess incredible fighting abilities. Ooh, So many sound effects. Dot dot dot. Vomb? I'm being attacked. Shh. Uh, who are you? Oh, I want to see this whole face. Very dramatic. Good, good pan there, Alex. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my best here. Oh boy. All right. Oh, show yourself. All right, he almost got his ass kicked. Yeah. Oh, that's axe. I love that scream. I'm here to take your life. <laughs> siege? Yeah, siege. Stop. You don't have a chance. You give me no cho You give me no choice. Let's fight. All right, they're fighting. They're really getting it. Yeah, I do like how they occasionally insert game screenshots to really bridge the gap between comic and game. I like that too, actually. All right. Mm-hmm. My abilities are far superior to yours, so why do you attack me? And Aura surrounded the strangers. He began to transform. Uh-oh. Yeah, there's blood. Brap. Brap. Oh, sorry. Must have been that bean I ate. Sorry for the commentary. <laughs> Man, now, now that's a gra. What the? No. <laughs> Enough playing around. Where's the Mandara talisman? What? What are you talking about? Who are you? 
I am a tusk soldier. Tusk soldier? Culture brain. My god, they were in the Little Ninja Brothers. The universes, they're crossing over. Okay, I do like that these all are in the same universe. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter for now. You die. No, it doesn't matter. For now, you die. Smash. Alright, I will kill you. Yuck. Oh, there's a cyclone kick. Hold on, sorry about that. Oh, hold on. There we go. Oh, Alright, he's about to do something fucking cool. Hold or it's on. a library. Hmm? It's a library. Okay. <laughs> clap. Please clap. Oh, what the? Oh! Is he immortal? I've never seen so- oh, he's giving him a hug, it's clapping, I've never seen such power. They're good friends. <laughs> you are powerless because you are a human. Dude. Eek! Alright, alright, they're fighting. They're really gonna go for it here. I see blood. 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 Uh, yeah, you're really a tough guy, but your overconfidence will be your downfall. Fall. Sacred technique! Hero no Ken! Swood! Swood! There it is, the titular Hero you no Ken. Swood? And you, and you can see how it is in the game. Yeah, Swood is the sound it makes. Okay, Swood. Eek! I, th this can't be. I've been defeated by a mere human. Tusk soldier, never underestimate the power of Kung Fu. It's not over yet. There's a surprise waiting for you at the temple. Ooh! What? Rick loves surprises. What? Well, what's going on? Are all of you okay? Chikat. <laughs> Alright! Oh no! Ch Ch More tusk soldiers! Damn it. I fucking hate these guys. Oh, more screenshots. It's like I'm actually in there. Rick, you defeated them. Master Gen, are you alright? Master Gen, leader of the Ryu Hio, has trained and raised Rick from the beginning. Rick, it's too bad that Ryo Hio is defeated. Quiet now. I will take care of you. That is too bad. Don't worry. I knew this day would come. As long as we possess the Mandara, we will have to defend it from the Dark Dimension. Also this known is... as the Mandala. <laughs> this is one of our missions. A long time ago, the Lord of Light of the Light Dimension sealed Demonics. Ooh, that sounds like a good band name. <laughs> Demonics of the Dark Dimension up by the power of the Mandara Talisman. It's an omen when such creatures as the Tusk Soldiers awake and appear. We can't let let them put the Mandara Talisman together. All right, looks like we had to find the seven pieces of the Dragon Ball. I mean, the Mandara Talisman. <laughs> you can't see this, but Alex had to lean in real close to see some of those words. I thought this was just a legend. I don't know the details, but I know that the lost parts of the Mandara Talisman need to be found. And another mission is... Yeah, this is Demonius X's origin story. Uh-oh, shit. Foot! Uh-oh. Foot. Yes! Yeah! yeah. To train the warriors of the Light Dimension to use the Mandara Talisman. Rick, you are one of the warriors of the Light Dimension. The warrior of the Light Dimension? Me? Yeah. Rick, we have no regrets. YOLO, we are proud of you. <laughs> I didn't say YOLO. That's... Listen, it's a collaborative improvisation, Dan. It's editorialization. <laughs> Go to China and visit the Shoren Temple. Your fate awaits you there. We'll find all the answers to your questions. Shoren Temple. The ultimate temple where all Kung Fu masters aspire to be. Here is my fate. I must see it for myself. What fate... Sorry, I was out of order here. What fate awaits me beyond the gate? Shadow Gate. Oh! Oh! Hello, boys. What are you doing? Come with us. It feels like the Little Ninja Brothers, but grown up. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe this is in the future. It's a time skip. Wait here. Ugh! Open! For a long time, we have waited, especially for you, because... Do not be alarmed. Because we want to fight you. Show us your kung fu power. All right, and here, here it is. is. The last page, leaving on a cliffhanger. Will Rick beat the two giant men he encountered? Suddenly, the... two gigantic men appear. What is to become of Rick's fate? Well, that's up to you when you play Flying Warriors for your Nintendo Entertainment System. And I will teach you the ultimate technique, Hero no Ken. What did you think of the is this issue of Flying Warriors? We are planning an exciting sequel. Further, sorry, a exciting sequel. Further secrets will be revealed. 
Please feel free to comment or submit drawings to Culture Brain USA Incorporated. The level, this level of excitement will soon be available as a NES game cartridge. Hero no Ken stems from the Miracle Kick. To learn this technique, you must be able to endure great difficulty. The power of Hero no Ken can be used to change the shape of the mountains. The more wow. pieces of the Mandara that you acquired, the more power you will have attained. And there you go, that is my introduction to Flying Dragon, and holy shit, how unforgettable is that? <laughs> like, you're just paging through GamePro, looking at which games got exploding heads that issue. All of a sudden, 16-page uh, Dragon Ball Z-style manga about this game nobody has ever heard of, and suddenly it's all you can think about. Uh, especially because the next eight issues of GamePro also had multi-page comics based on Flying Warriors. If you had a subscription that year, like... A good, I would say, 20% of pages were devoted to Flying Warriors. It would be all you could think about, it would be the game you wanted, and unfortunately if you were in South Texas, it would be the game that you could never find. Ooh. But well, let's play it. Shit, really? Mm-hmm. Now, oh yeah, first of all, let's, uh, let's take a little bit of a look at the localization process. Okay. Because Culture Brain did have a USA branch. Uh, there was a lot of difficulties involved. A lot of their games actually were majorly overhauled in between the Famicom and NES releases, including this one. As I mentioned, it's a combination of Here You Know Kin 2 and 3. So just imagine this company having to mail prototype ROMs back and forth, being like, okay, is this ready for release? Is this one? This took place over a period of several months, and then they finally got a release candidate, which we at Lost Levels were lucky enough to get our hands on. Please enjoy. Here we go. This is one of my favorite prototypes. I love this. So this is after months, possibly years of work, combining two popular Famicom games. There's Yuma no Skate. You think, finally, here it is. It's ready. It's finally Flying. going to... Oh. Oh, man. Oh. We, uh, we gotta send this back to Japan. Ooh. The funny thing about this prototype is it's almost entirely complete except for that. And it's it's not even like tiled in a way where you can just switch around the words. It was drawn like that. <laughs> so this is the game that introduces Rick Stalker and the Flying Warriors. And what do you say we switch over to the final version? Because <laughs> oh, it's man, it's otherwise are you sure? it's otherwise very similar. Okay, okay. I'm so glad we could find that prototype. Like it's such a small detail, but it's one that just makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. Here it is. This is the one that shipped. Culture Brain, they had Moxie, but they were maybe straining themselves a little bit too hard sometimes. Flying... Ah, there you go. You got it this time. Nice. Spelled correctly and everything. Good job, Flying Warriors. I mean, Warriors. Yeah, Warriors. The Adventures of Rick Stalker. Let's get it started. After all that build-up, this has got to be the most amazing game ever. It has character portraits that were entirely original and redrawn for the U.S. release. And it actually has multiple difficulty levels. And that fighting game style introduced in the first game, they actually simplified it. Though you can use the, uh, the full version. Here, they stepped it back a little bit. Light and dark. Demonics! Oh no. That's a cool name. That sounds like a... It's a throng of soldiers. Demonics sounds like a house musician. I like that. <laughs> Pretty sure this intro is all new for Flying Warriors as well. Got some game theory in chat that it is possible that Culture Brain intentionally misspelled it so that leaked copies are easy to find. But was anybody wanting, was anyone wanting to leak this? That's a good thought, yeah. Maybe the Yakuza were thinking one step ahead. We love you, Yakuza. We're really not worth killing, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're, you're better off. There's, there's plenty of other folks you should go after. I mean, we're boring as shit. I also think this game was inspired by a little game called Ninja Gaiden, because this has a whole lot of cinema-style cutscenes. There's Culture Brain's obsession with Kung Fu once again. <laughs> and yep, we gotta defend the mark on our body. 
Let's practice. This looks familiar. Now I picked easy mode, so instead of pushing different directions, you just have to hit right, or rather towards your opponent. And I think there's just a single attack button, too. But look at those graphics. That's They're like good. twice as big as they were in the first game. You can throw your dude around. They're way less cutesy, which I don't know if that's a downgrade or an upgrade. I think it depends. And after that, we mastered the art of Kung Fu. It's just that easy. Oh shit, cool. And here's where the problem is, because it starts with a fight against your master, and if he doesn't think you're doing well enough, he makes you redo the training from the beginning. <laughs> this game's serious about teaching you karate. I mean, Kung Fu, sorry. Shit. <laughs> It doesn't go easy on you either. <laughs> Drop a luxury with 100 pride bits saying me and the boys out hanging out defending the mark on our body. <laughs> you gotta do it. Can I get this? Yes, good. The, uh, the life we have is represented at the bottom of the screen. This is actually a really tough fight for being the first thing you do in the video game. Sometimes you block, but it doesn't take. I don't I don't quite understand this game's fighting formula. It's something. Oh damn it, he decided oh, we weren't good you enough. Have no pride, Danny. We need more training, and of all course right. we gotta do it all the way over from the beginning. This is the exact Flying Warriors experience that I'm reproducing here. Now, if I don't succeed the next time, we're gonna move on. Okay. But I hope to at least show off the first level. Gotta do the kung fu right. Just like the song says, do the kung fu. Mm-hmm. Everybody was doing the kung fu. Mm -hmm. That's how that goes. Mm -hmm. Now we mastered the kung fu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do a practice. You got it. You got it. Do you have to turtle so much, master? Can't you just let me get a move in? Good start. Damn it, that one move. Haha, <laughs> I trained you wrong on purpose. Because it was <laughs> funny. Damn it. I didn't even lose all my health. He just decides at one point, nope, nope, start over. You suck, sorry. <laughs> Christ almighty. I'm trying to show off your game, Culture Brain. I'm trying to get people to invest in your company. Which is a legitimate business, as far as we all know. <laughs> there! I've mastered Kung Fu for the third time. Yeah, 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 let's fight. It's fine, don't worry about it. Get his ass, Danny. Oh, I'm getting him. That Get ass your teacher. Is, that ass is getting got. Yeah, how can he say we have no pride? Have you seen this stream? Yeah. It's game pride all over the place. I'm prideful as shit. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is looking good. Reducing his health by a good amount. You can see how stodgy this gameplay is, which is really unfortunate. I wish they would have made it at least a little bit easier to deal with. Got a hot tip from Arnold Drummer. Uh, if this is giving you trouble, pick expert difficulty because it skips this and goes straight to the side scroller. Oh my god, really? Thank Shit, you. Shit, I didn't know that. Thank you. But luckily, yes, we did it. Yeah, eat shit, teacher. And of course, the Dragon Quest effect takes effect because we get experience points and levels. Oh. And now it's a video game. Look at this shit. Some nice big sprites for NES, some detailed backgrounds. Thanks and for you did it, folks. <laughs> Thanks, that was surprisingly tough. Now to me, to my eyes, this looks a whole lot like the Famicom Hope to No Ken games. But this does play a little bit better. And thankfully they don't li they don't make you do the whole defend your mark thing during the side-scrolling segments. But it still has the exact same formula as Flying Dragon in that these are infinitely looping levels where you have to find a certain thing before you can progress. I 
think in this part you have to find some lady's robe. We'll see in a second. But for 1990, this looks pretty good. It's multi-scrolling, characters are nice and large, there's kung fu. They are really big, I like it, yeah. And they put so much work into this, again, combining two separate sequels which are entirely different from this. Mourning the loss of my robe, baby. Now we gotta go find some robe. Now, as far as I know, this is the single game that Culture Brain put all their resources into. Like, not just the comics, but different ad campaigns. They were pushing this hard in Nintendo Power. I lost my robe. Can't return home without that robe. I'm naked. No, she borrowed it from her hotel room, and they're gonna charge her if she doesn't bring it back. Oh, yeah. They're charging $50! That's bullshit! Have you felt that it? it's at least $20 from Target? This robe sucks, but I, I can't. <laughs> Listen. I think they reused it, too. Oh. So, these levels are kind of... I fell down a waterfall. Rick Stalker's life ended that day, but he won't stop at this. This is a very lengthy quest. There's a whole lot of stuff you can do in this game, and unfortunately this is all I've ever seen of it, because I've never progressed very far in it. But I did pass the training. That's hey. something, right? Congrats to Danny, he passed basic training. <laughs> Flying warriors, rush to your local toy store to reserve your copy. Yeah, Rick, Stalk walk. Rick Stalker will thank you. Yeah, run, don't walk to your local Funko, uh, uh, Egghead Software, all those places. But Flying Warriors wasn't just on NES. It was also on, guess what, the Game Boy. Ooh. Culture Brain really believed in the Game Boy, and they were right to. It was pretty popular for a time. It came out on Game Boy as the excellent and <laughs> very concise title, Fighting Simulator 2 and 1, Flying Warriors. Normal name. That barely fits in our screen. That's I know. So good. This is it. Yeah. There you go. This game. Who played this one? I think someone earlier said they were a fan of this. Mountain of the Dragon. I think we actually saw that mountain in uh, Flying Warriors. Oh, cool. So there is some continuity even between systems. Can I move to the Mountain of the Dragon? Yeah, why not? Sounds nice. Culture Brain presents. Oh, the song! Game Boy audio in general is kind of underrated. I really like the way the, a lot of this music sounds. This is good. Now, this is two in one in that it includes a tournament, straight up one on one fighting mode, in addition to an action RPG ish kind of mode. This motherfucker. Oh, he looks so good in grayscale, though, I gotta say. I will make you train until you want to turn the game off. Luckily, no training in this one, so this may in fact be the best Flying Warriors game. And look how big he is! He's a giant! This must have looked really impressive on Game Boy back then. Kind of reminds me of a game I saw a dot level play a few days ago called Sumo Fighter, <laughs> which is a lot like this, only you're a sumo wrestler instead of a, a kung fu guy. Like to the point where you had to grab dudes and toss them off the screen. And there were a whole bunch of games just like this on Game Boy. Including, once again, Jalico. I think they did a uh, Ninja Jajamaru game for this. What was it called? Maru's Mission? I don't know, but I hope it's called that. It's all part of the, the greater trend. Ninjas. Uh, third string, third party developers. Culture Brain is first string in my heart, though. Mm -hmm. Culture Brain is like all the strings. They are so good. Yeah, they're first, second, and third string. Oh, cool. Ninja Jaja Maru expert uh, Whoop Von Whoop confirms it was Maru's mission. Okay, good. Yeah, check out Whoop Von Whoop's uh, streams if you want to see all the Ninja Jaja Maru you can handle. Mm-hmm. And some you can't. Mm-hmm. 
I can't handle it. At oh, all. he did the hear you no kin on me. Did you see that? Oh, I missed it. That no. was the move. You you fly up backwards a million miles in the sky, and then you fly down and kick a dude in the face, and that's the hear you no kin. <laughs> that's legit a move in every single hear you no kin game. Unfortunately, if you lose, you get kicked back to the beginning of the level, but that just teaches you patience, you know? Mm -hmm. Something that all us gamers must know. Culture Bring was all about teaching you how to be a better person. Alright, hold on, I want to... Chad's talking about the Mario's Mission box art, so I'm going to take a peek here. Oh, it's a good one. You definitely want to see that. Yeah, check that shit out. Hmm, that's amazing. Now, would that make you want to buy the game? Who knows, but <laughs> it exists. That's beautiful. Alright, this time we're going to beat him. Don't you do my own move on me. He did it again! <laughs> oh, that's good! <laughs> don't worry about it, Danny! Don't, don't you do that here, you know, kin on me. Don't you do it. Hit select to use the magic water. Good, thank you for thank the tip. Thank you! Thank you, Grindstormer. This also does that Samurai Showdown thing, where occasionally weapons fly into the arena. He loves, he loves the Hiryu no Ken. And as far as I know, there's no defense against it. This is no good. <laughs> Read the instruction booklet! <laughs> wow! You shit-talking me during my Culture Brain Appreciation stream? You really gonna do this? Danny, that's really funny. I'm sorry. You know what? Fuck culture. No, no. I'm, I'm still a fan. I don't. I don't care if they insult my intelligence. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just don't have that cultured brain they're trying to, to give me. They're just trying to do tough love to get your brain more cultured. There it is. There's the hearing you know can oh, for like good. the fifth time. But as it turns out, this was one of the last releases from Culture Brain. And no. next up, we're going to play the very last game they released here in the states. This, of course, was another evolution of Flying Warriors. And once again, this is a combination of multiple games that were released in Japan. There was Super Hear You No Ken 1 and I think Special, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. And then when it came time to release it in the States, there was a third revision, which as far as I know was exclusive to the States, called Ultimate Fighter. Wikipedia says it was titled this based on the popular of ulti the popularity of Ultimate Fighting Championships. Mm. Citation needed. <laughs> That's a big old citation. Absolutely, citation needed. Now, what can 16-bit do to Rick Stalker and friends? Well, it looks fucking awesome for one thing. Hey, 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 hey! Excuse me, they're wrestling now. Look at that shit. This is maybe the best looking culture brain game we got. Oh yeah. Okay, I like this so far. Once again, it's got versus tournament modes in addition to story mode. Let's do that story. Hopefully they won't tell me to read the instruction booklet this time. I want zero difficulties. No difficulties, please. I've paid my dues. I deserve a life free of difficulties. You know we all do. <laughs> that's that's a great sentence right there. All right, this guy seems uh. His Dargon. Name is Dargon. That's me when I'm trying to talk about my uh, fixations and chat. I'm like, <laughs> Dargon, I love Dargon. I do love Dargon. This is part of the Flying Warriors series. Gotta give them credit for continuing these series across multiple platforms in several years. They were convinced this was gonna be a hit. And there's our boy Rick. And this game, it looks incredible to my eyes. I mean, the frame rate is kinda lacking, but in terms of the characters, the way they look, the way they animate, like, holy shit. From Flying Dragon to this. They talk, too. Oh shit, they talk! Oh, this kick move's good. 
I haven't played much of this, but I had a lot of fun with these beat em up segments. Anyone else play this? What do you think of it? Uh, let's see, we, we have some fans of this in chat. Other fans of the uh, N64 game, which we'll talk about in a second. Mm -hmm. Let's see, uh, this game rules. Uh, this looks cool. I, I love this. Like, I'm not super into these games, but this looks good. Yeah, visually it kind of reminds me of that Ninja Warriors remake they made for Super Nintendo. Not the same developer, but kind of a similar style. Alright, Cool Coyote says this is giving off China Warrior vibes. I see that, I see that. Yeah, they're very big. But I would argue it's more playable than China Warrior. And look at this, you don't have to defend the mark anymore. Oh, this is a real God. fighting game. Many, many years later, they finally turned it into a real-ass fighting game. Same chat called this uh, China Warrior, but good. That's fair. Sorry for China Warrior fans, but you know. Hey, we support China. War I, I support China Warrior fans. You're 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 valid. You're very valid. In fact, China Warrior in Japan was called the Kung Fu. And what's this series all about? The Kung Fu. Mm. Makes you think. Mm -hmm. Teach a conspiracy. I don't know what the conspiracy is, but teach it anyway. So yeah, in my brief time with this, I really enjoy this, and I especially appreciate it knowing just how many games came before it. It was a very, very slow evolution, but an evolution nonetheless. I agree with the Cambrian era. Uh, they say, Culture Brain wishes they had thought of the name China Warrior because they love China and Warriors. It's true. Boy, do they ever. The ultimate Culture Brain game would be called, like, Kung Fu Man from China or mm -hmm. something. Come on. Let's beat Simon, the ultimate Kung Fu Master. Now, the one thing I don't know how to do myself is the, the Hear You No Kin. Maybe that's something you learn later on in the game. Look, it's got blocking. You don't have to do that weird-ass training mode. They finally got it right. Oh, yeah. And it's unfortunate because this was the very last Flying Warriors game, or any game, released by Culture Brain here in the States. There was Flying Dragon for N64, but by that time, Culture Brain USA office had closed down, and uh, they left Natsume to publish it. We covered that during our N64 Fighters episode, if you want to track that down. It's on YouTube. And I remember that being pretty good. Just a shame Culture Brain USA died before then. Because, you know, that was kind of a time to be releasing fighting games, especially for N64, which desperately needed them. Alright, so we got uh, some info on how to do the Hero No Ken. It's up in Y and B, but you have to have a full KO Cosmic Saucer meter? Cosmic Saucer? Cosmic Saucer! Mmm, that sounds delicious. Yeah, it doesn't look like my KO meter's full, but it, I can do this. Where'd you go, man? It's almost as good. Look at those dudes back there. They love it. They're like, yeah, kick his ass, kick his ass! Rush! These monks love violence. What do I do when Rush appears? Um, yeah, break out the drums and go. Actually, break out the drums and go. Do 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 You know, they say all the world's indeed a stage, and we are merely kung fu masters. Turn off the radio or call Tom Sawyer. Beautiful. Oh, look at this dude! Oh shit! It's time to become a flying warrior. Excuse me! Now this is the real shit. Damn! This looks great! I love this. This easily could have competed with other SNES fighters of the era. Like, it's it's not as polished as Street Fighter 2 or anything, but it looks the part. It's the kind of game where you could show your friends and they'd be jealous. Hell, I'm jealous. I agree, this would be a really good uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game, probably with a quick race skin. Mm hmm. And back to normal. Alright. Oh, what do you guys think now? Yeah, you're, you're quiet now, you ain't saying shit. That's right. <laughs> I see how it is. And this Ultimate Fighter for the Super Nintendo, indeed the Ultimate Fighter in the Hear You No Kin slash Flying Warriors series. Give it a shot if you get a chance. 
but there's one game that doesn't fit in any of the series we've covered so far, and it, it is in fact one of the more popular Culture Brain games, so we should cover that before we end the stream tonight. That is a Nintendo game by the name of The Magic of Scheherazade. How many kids back then knew how to pronounce Scheherazade, you think? Um, not me. <laughs> yeah, me either. Are we going to play that ferret game? Yes. Okay, good. Don't worry. Okay, making sure, because we've had a lot of people being like, ferret, yeah. ferret, I, ferret. I did and... want to make sure to cover all their U.S. releases, and we've done all of them except for Scheherazade, okay, so this cool, will be the last one. Cool. All right, cool, cool. Just want to give the audience what they want, and what they want is a ferret adventure so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. So we love the ferrets. I'm we're, on we're... your side. Mm -hmm. This one. I like this game a lot. You played this? A, a little bit, but I've, I've, I've also seen it being played more than I've actually played it. This game Ass? is kind of amazing when you think about it. Uh, this was 87 in Japan, and... This is a brief overview. This is essentially an action RPG in the style of Zelda, but it involves like character classes and time travel, like to the point where you can travel to different eras and affect what happens in different eras. Just real ambitious stuff for the time. And they didn't directly bring it over. This is another one of those games that they heavily worked on and reworked for the US release. They gave it a completely new soundtrack. They redrew all the character art. You can tell them no at the beginning. It's a false choice. Yeah. I like that cat a lot. Let's select your class. What I'm trying to say here is that this is an extremely deep game for 87, and the reworking here made it into something that many people would consider to be one of their favorite NES games. It's just so different, is what I like about it. Yeah. Uses an Arabian setting, which I can't think of any other NES game that did something like this. A lot of characters from mythology and stuff. I know we're not ob we're obviously not going to go through the whole game here, but I really recommend you watch a uh, let's play or a playthrough of this on YouTube because there's there's some really cool things that happen in this game. Like, mm -hmm. I, there's huge screen filling bosses. There's time travel. Mm-hmm. Talking to people in the village. Mm -hmm. Multiple weapons. Ass is having a hard time. Mm -hmm. My princess was taken away. But yeah, considering the time it was made, I'd say it compares favorably with stuff like Zelda, uh, Govelius on Master System. Ooh, that's another good one. Yeah. Uh, let's use Jump and also Sword. In fact, the way you can assign different functions to the A and B buttons kind of reminds me of Link's Awakening. Gives you a lot of control over what you get to do in different scenes. Occasionally you come into scenes and monsters will appear. But they're being shy right now. There they are. Oh shit, there they are. Yeah, check this out. Get their ass. It's just one of those games that I never got to spend any time with, but I keep meaning to. And I get the feeling this was not a cheap game for a culture brain, considering they had to remake large parts of it for the U.S. Fun fact from Taizo here, the composer of the Japanese version was fired shortly before its release because he had an argument with uh, culture brain co-founder Yume no Suge. <laughs> I read about that in Taizo's thread, which I'm going to link to uh, Final Time here. Yeah. Do check it out. It's um, good stuff. Yeah, I... That may be why they completely replaced the soundtrack, because Yumenosuke decided, Fuck that guy! <laughs> Let's make a new soundtrack. Yeah, That guy's uh, an asshole. It's mentioned in the thread, Yumenosuke would uh, butt heads quite a bit with uh, members of the uh, Culture Brain staff, and it wasn't very good. Asses level rises. Now, as we mentioned, they, were, they also became... Uh, they were friends in elementary school. They knew each other for a long time, but it manifested itself in this... Yumanosuke having physical altercations with the sales staff and shit. Yeah, he, I, he apparently, like, yeah, beat them up sometimes, or... <laughs> but then, yeah, then again, like I said, a lot of the information we know about Culture Brain is through Japanese shit posts, so <laughs> who even knows? But what we're left here is a company that is kind of mysterious and also definitely charming based on the few games that they did make and release here in the States. I hope you know a little bit more about them and can better appreciate them. I'd say if you want to play some of their games, definitely check out this one. 
Uh, also check out Ultimate Fighter, which is surprisingly good. Mm -hmm. And hell, Kung Fu Heroes is on Nintendo Switch Online. You have no excuse. Go play True. it. Make sure you read the manual, though. Yeah, or they'll, uh, unfortunately, they will yell at you. <laughs> yeah, they'll tell you to read the instruction manual. I like the way the dudes walk around on the, in the town. Oh, yeah, they just kind of go up and... They just kind of shuffle. They strafe. <laughs> the strafe in town. Mm-hmm. You can also use magic. I think if you use Oprin here, you can... Yeah, there's hidden entrances. Oh, yeah! Thanks! Again, very Zelda-inspired, but considering just how soon it came out after Zelda, this would have seemed like... Almost a revelation, if you really like these kinds of games. You can take out loans, for fuck's sake! There's loan sharks in this game. There's also shops where they tell you the price and you can haggle with them. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff you never really see much in Famicom games. I want to say, I, I could be wrong, but... Um, I want to say if you haggle too much, they get mad at you. They do, they kick you okay. out. Okay. Secret at the bottom of the lake. What does that mean? We're not gonna find out. And a strange one I be. I be indeed. <laughs> so that's your clue to travel 50 years in the past to solve, I don't know, some kind of puzzle. It's basic stuff like, it literally has a point where you plant a seed, it becomes a tree in the future. Stuff like that. I will not stay at your stupid inn. The tree thing is actually pretty cool. Yeah. Especially for NES, like, good god. Mm -hmm. Culture Brain. They had ambition. And when they weren't remaking the same game seven or eight times, they occasionally made something really good like this. Okay, here's a shop. Okay. I would like a mashroom. Give me a discount. Oh, that's a 50% discount. That's no, I want, discount. I want another discount. Don't be a smart aleck. Get out of here. <laughs> to be fair, he's giving you 50% off and you're saying no to it. Yeah, 50% is pretty good. You gotta take what you can get. Mm -hmm. So... That is the end of Culture Brain. After Ultimate Fighter, they closed down their US office, and in Japan, they released a few more Super Chinese World sequels, as well as a couple more Here You Know Ken games, before closing down their massive skyscraper studio and moving into, what was it, like above an udon shop or something? Uh, a bento shop. A bento shop. And now, uh, fun fact, uh, a couple people have tried to mention it, uh, uh, it's still around, Culture Brain is still around, but it's run by uh, Yume Nosuke's son, out of Yumanosuke's son's apartment. Aw, oh, it's a family business. That's sweet. But there's a couple more games they released after their, their salad days, as they say. There was a few Super Nintendo platformers, also starring ninjas. And then in the Game Boy era, they kind of switched gears. And let's play a couple of those games, let's say. All right. What are we starting off with here, Danny? Well, they decided to get into the princess raising genre with a game called Oshade Princess. That's entirely in Japanese. I couldn't get anywhere in it. I don't think we're going to show that off. Okay. It was all about fashion and raising a princess to be cool. Okay. But what we're going to play here... You know what? First of all, let's check out Super Chinese Fighter EX. Let's see what happened to those little ninja boys. This was released in the year 2000 for Game Boy Color. It's got Jack and Ryu, along with other Ryu and Lin Lin. I, I, love, I love some of these faces here. All your favorites. Mm -hmm. There's different items you can use. Let's, uh, let's fight. Now, since this is 2000, this is very much in the vein of those downported Game Boy fighters you saw back then. They made a version of Battle Arena Toshinden. There was, uh... Oh, what was the SNK one? It wasn't King of Fighters, was it? I'm not particularly sure. Maybe chat knows. Was it Fatal Fury? One of them. But this is very much like those games. It's 
just a shame they had to abandon their whole hit the mark technique that they were so insistent on in All the right. Famicom era. Chad is saying that it said shit attack on the screen earlier. I was checking chat so I missed it. Whoa, but... cool. Do a shit attack, Jack. I was five hit. No, no, it was shit attack. So, yeah, that was Shit okay. attack. Shit attack. Nice. In terms of their plans for the Game Boy, this is kind of off the beaten path for them. This is just them being nostalgic, pretty much. Because their bread and butter for the next several years was through pet raising sims. Notably, uh, Hamster Monogatari. And our last game for the evening, the game you've been waiting to see. Yes! Ferret Monogatari. Ferret story. Ferret. It's a good ferret. Ferrets come from Europe. That, that's all true! Oh. Oh, look at them go. They're kept as pets. That's true. This is all true. You can hug your ferret. That's also true. Culture brain. Culture brain! There you go. That tells you all you need to know. Ferret monogatari. Now, you heard of pets, pets, dogs, and cats. Mm-hmm. Well... They didn't get to ferrets, so Culture Brain filled that niche on the Game Boy Color. First we head to the ferret store. My name is... Ah! My name, too. Now, which ferret do we want? Which one of these looks good to you? Um... These two, I think they're brothers. This one has uh, darker legs. It does! Okay, I, I can barely tell the difference! Uh, You're not a ferret expert. I'm not. I'm really not. I live in California where they were banned. So... Are they banned in California? I don't know if they still are, but there definitely is a, an underground ferret ownership network. I'm gonna pick this one. Right, that one looks good. What's the ferret's name? It's... Ooh. Alright, thank you so very much to Apricot Ghost for the 13th month resub. Thank you so much, Apricot Ghost says. Ferret party. Yeah, it's a ferret party. Everyone's invited. It's a little smelly in here. Ferrets smell bad. It, it, that is... <laughs> I, that's not why they're banned, but maybe that should be why they're banned. <laughs> maybe it is. And here it is. Uh, very similar to the pet's formula. It has the screen where you get to see your ferret roam around and do stuff. He can eat. He can sleep. If you watch long enough, he might even take a shit. If I recall correctly, the reason that ferrets are banned in California is because uh, they are worried about their effect there on... There he is. Oh, they're worried about their effect on the local wildlife if they get loose, but... Honestly, cats are kind of worse for the local wildlife and birds. Kinda, but, yeah. But that's a whole other story altogether. This is a comprehensive pet raising sim that takes place across multiple years. You have to oh, teach your ferret. Oh, look! Oh, that's cute! Oh, touch it! Touch it! Okay. Uh oh. Oh, he didn't like that. Oh, oh there you go. He did like it. Good. I think this ferret likes us. Let's give him some pets. Whoa, man! It's wiggling! Holy shit! He's got the zoomies. Oh, he's a little wiggle worm! <laughs> Oh, God! <laughs> I think, uh, I think this one's defective. Can we just end on this? You know what? I can't think of a better way to end this, so... Yeah, ferrets, if you don't treat them right, they'll bite you. And that's what this game teaches you. <laughs> ferret story. The story of a ferret eating, pooping, and then biting you. Oh my god! Oh my god! Now after that, Culture Brain tried a bunch of different things. They, uh, they went the typical route of making Shogi and Mahjong games, a whole bunch of them, along with pet raising sims, fashion sims, and then eventually they stopped releasing games entirely. Really unfortunate. But they had a good run. Yume Nosuke got to fulfill his dream many, many, many times over. He got to make his dream kung fu game so many times across so many platforms. And in the end, when you have a game called Ferret Monogatari, can you really call yourself a failure? Mm -mm. That's Culture Brain.
and hopefully you know a little bit more about them now than you know than you knew before. Beautiful. My finger hurts. Ow. He's he's really chewing on that thing. He's really going for it. <laughs> I think we're done here. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for <laughs> that guy. Yeah, uh, real quick, everyone in Texas, stay safe, and hopefully your brain is okay. Yeah, everyone on the coast, uh, watch out. There's a couple of hurricanes, like two of them at the same time. That's kind of messed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone stay safe, stay indoors, and play ferret games. Thanks to Cool Coyote for the 25 bits. Yum, 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 <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Thank you. As a tasty finger. Ferrets love to eat fingers. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, this is Retro Pals. We do this sort of thing a lot. This has been our latest ill-advised publisher spotlight. Special thanks to Alex for putting in the extra hours and, like, reading the comics and everything. Mm -hmm. You read 24 pages of comics today. Oh, that's, that's incredible. That's what I usually read in a day when it comes to comics, so that's Yeah, true, fine. true. I love comics. Ah, oh, thank you all so much for the bits, the subs. We really do appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who followed. We mm -hmm, really do mm -hmm. appreciate your support. Yeah, we are a Patreon-supported show. You can head to patreon.com slash retropals. If you're at the $5 tier, you get to vote each week to tell us what to play every Wednesday. This week it was a battle of the brains. Culture brain won over electro brain. Mm -hmm. I'm still intrigued about what... What is Electrobrain? We're, we didn't find out tonight. Maybe we will in, will in the future. Keep an eye on our future polls. Maybe you will see Electrobrain uh, rise up again. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's where you go to vote. No idea what next week is going to be. I'll figure something out. And that poll will go up Friday at noon. So mm -hmm. keep an eye out. Uh, Alex, wrap us up. I'm going to look for a host. We are also on YouTube, youtube.com slash RetroPals. We post highlights of our stream there. We do have some original content, including that N64 uh, year one episode that talks a bit about uh, the Flying Warriors uh, N64 game. So do check that out there. Uh, real quick, thank you again so very much to Taizo. I'm going to link to that thread one more time. Do check it out. Just That's the an only amazing resource. Only English language info I've ever seen on Culture Brain, and it popped up today. That's good timing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Great stuff. Absolutely great stuff. And give Taizo a follow, too. They're really informative, and they have to say, they say cool things. Um, let's see. We are also on uh, Twitter, twitter.com slash RetroPalsHQ. We post uh, when we go live there, along with stuff like Taizo's thread, um, whenever people send us cool memes, which happens a lot. You're all our angels. I have, I've seen some good shit. So yeah, do follow us there if you want to know when we go live and when we post highlights and all that good stuff. This week's meme theme is ferrets biting your fingers. All right. I've uh, decided. Get at it. Who am I hosting? Yeah. Who's doing stuff? I'm just, I'm just, the, the ferret is still on our screen, by the way, and it is beautiful. He's still nibbling. How is our finger still intact? Hold on. Is this really happening? Mm. Oh my God. Okay. What's up? So maybe I misread this the other day, but Kate Libsey was playing Mario is Missing, and I think she was trying to build a randomizer <laughs> off of it. Maybe maybe that was just a horrible dream I had, but in any case, now she's playing it for real. This is going to be a real playthrough of Mario is Missing by someone who actually knows how to play it. How rare is that? Oh, man. So go enjoy that. Have a good rest of your evening, and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. See ya, folks.